Hey there, it's Sarah. At the Universal Design Project, we are sharing stories to bring awareness to the wide variety of people that live in our communities. People's functional needs are diverse, but they want the same things. They want the same opportunities as others. Their voice is valuable for why living in a welcoming community matters. In this video, people are going to explain what is important to them in the design of public spaces. I think you'll be surprised at how easy it is to implement some of these changes to make it user-friendly for a wide variety of people. Thanks for listening. There were some comfortable seating options. Um, after a while for me, my back just starts hurting if it's a bad chair. Sometimes it only takes five minutes. Um, or if my back is hurting, just having a spot to stop and rest. Make sure there's plenty of space. And I find I get isolated in public areas because I cannot maneuver my chair to get to a restroom, uh, to a buffet if it's a buffet, or to food areas. And uh, just to create more space so that anyone in a chair has access. They would actually put some effort into design and not just copy what they've seen. They just cared. And like that's, that's literally the answer. Like, just care. Just care about other people. And don't really think about like how we can save the business, but really think about like how my business can help other people. Um, I'm gonna go with the door buttons. When people design public spaces, uh, consider putting in a door, a button to open doors. <laughs> it's really helpful for strollers and for wheelchairs and devices. Having the ability to have some of these little um, devices that could be hooked up at different events where a person could use their phone and get an audio description or maybe a beeper to let them kind of know where they are. Um, again, it's like indoor, what they call indoor and outdoor navigation, you know, using the apps and stuff. So um, I, I think with some of just the technology that's out there can really make that better. Maybe even, you know, just take some input from everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, just a little sample from every population and to see what people need, don't just assume. The greasy floors are the worst, the, the fast food restaurants are around. And, and I empathize with them. I mean, I'm sure it's difficult to get that film off the floor, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they're just not conscious of how well they do it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the floors is, as we say, very, you know, smooth anyway. Yeah, they're smooth anyway. Too. And, you know, if, if they've got a little bit of texture to them, you know, it's not as, not quite as bad. You, we, to an extent, spend most time focusing on and worrying about in the world outside our home is bathrooms. <laughs> oh, yes. Bathrooms yeah. are huge. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, like, if... Well, they're not huge. That's the problem. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> they're too small, and they're steps and so things. So, if we are going <laughs> anywhere, I, I, I really would like to know in advance where is my next bathroom where it's going to be. Sure. Because, of course, we are two different sexes, so it's not so easy to get into... Mm -hmm. So we, 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 as, you know, a heterosexual couple, um, mm -hmm. you need to find a family, a family bathroom, ideally, because yes. even if there's a what's your example, bathroom, if it's, you know, the men's room and there's, you know, 20 urinals and 15 <laughs> stalls and a lot of traffic coming in or vice versa, yeah. me going into women's room is not going to work. Her going to men's room, we've done it when we have to, but it's right. not comfortable for mm -hmm. anyone. Yeah. A private room. You know, I know a lot of places have places for mothers to nurse, you know, if, like if those are... Those might be multi-purpose. I don't know. For example, yeah. hotels. Um, it's interesting that uh, you go into a hotel and you know, sometimes your so-called accessible rooms in the mirror will start here. Mm -hmm. All you've got to do is sit in a chair. You don't need to have a wheelchair person sit in a chair and notice that the fact mirrors, traditionally that is, you know, when uh, some of the uh, hotels and older buildings are, businesses are making accommodations, they will put two grab bars up and they think that's ex access or mm -hmm. you can't get a wheelchair in, you can't turn turn around, you can't close the door. So putting grab bars does, does not make a wheelchair accessible. The um, handicap parking, again putting up a sign mm -hmm. doesn't mean to say that it's handicap accessible. You need to follow the guidelines mm -hmm. to have the extra 
wide and the access space as well. Uh, but so many places, uh, and I see every every week, I'll go someplace and there's a that plop down handicap sign and parking sign and there's no access at all. Uh, so it's so like say, any other spot. It's like any other spot. So just just putting in uh, a grab bar or putting up a mirror or putting up a sign does not make it accessible. Look at the guidelines and follow the guidelines. Well, I know that there's a lot of planning that goes into designing public places. And I think that if um, those people that are designing the public places have a team of uh, folks that have either been through or have a knowledge a knowledge base of um, what it's like to have disabilities or people with disabilities, um, then if you have those people in the planning commissions, if you have those people in the architectural teams, um, I think it's, that would be very important to be able to plan um, how are people with um, disabilities going to get in and move around and so forth. And the general population doesn't understand that unless they've been through it. So you need to tap into people who are experienced, people that have either the disability themselves, why not get some of those people in because they are the voice that we need to hear. If they were going to build a new building, I wish they'd ask me to consult or somebody consult. Like, you know, you're here, you're available, you're a resource, I'm a resource, and they may not want to do it the way or somebody else may not mm -hmm. want it that way, but you need that perspective. I mean, to, to me, the easiest thing that could be fixed in town mm -hmm. um, to make it easier for anybody with a stroller mm -hmm. would be the sidewalks okay you know i mean like i really feel like that's a it's a no-brainer mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know that we're not the only ones with a stroller or a wheelchair mm -hmm. you know that trying to navigate around those poles mm -hmm. in traffic it sucks and you know and dug out sections of sidewalk Absolutely. and um, in public spaces it'd be really helpful if there was seating in every store or every um, building that you come in because um, if you're on crutches you get so tired um, walking around on your crutches um, and so it'd be really helpful to have a place to sit and a designated place to sit that's not like tucked away in a corner like here's a random chair you can sit on um, that's not very inviting for those who have disabilities and also um, when you design a building, make sure that you design it to be able to have a wheelchair maneuver through it. Um, and even just how you're setting up, maybe if it's a store, how you're setting up your displays. Can a wheelchair get all the way around without bumping into the display next to it? You know, I know the intentions are, are there, and, um, but um, there, as I say, in this day and time, the, the information is out there for people. Uh, I don't know about other areas, but uh, when I was doing some part-time work after I retired, I did some part-time, as I said, for the city as an ADA coordinator. If you have a question, go to the go to, to the town or the city, you know, and find out who their uh, building and zoning people are, and talk to them about uh, uh, necess necessity to make some changes. Mm -hmm. If you liked these stories and want to hear more, check out our website universaldesign.org slash people. Oh, and if you can relate to situations like this, share your story on our site and contribute to our wall of people. This helps bring awareness for the need for better design for a wide variety of people in our communities.